Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Greekside. I am Jenny and today we're going to give you a little bit of an update and show you things that are happening. We're going to go visit the uh, production greenhouse and see how all the new baby annuals are doing. Right now we are in the new greenhouse here at the retail space of the garden center. Before we get too far into this little introduction of the video, I'm going to tell you it is extremely windy today. We have got a lot of cold air blowing in from that nor'easter that hit the north. We got nothing, so we are good, except we are extremely cold. So if you hear like clanging and banging and weird sounds, it's the wind. Can't control the wind. So again, I got Jer here with me. He's mic'd up. Ready to go. Say hello to the people. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. That's nice right. to see everybody. Good evening, whatever day, time of the day it is. Yep. So one thing is, okay, obviously, so we're in here in the, in the new greenhouse and we're starting to set up um, how the tables are gonna go yep. and the setup of the greenhouse because obviously we wanna maximize our space in the best way possible, but we also, my desire for this space is to make it very retail friendly, homey as much as a greenhouse can be homey and inviting and have character and personality to it and not such a production feel to it obviously we need to put as many plants in here and products in here as we possibly can so we've just been going back and forth over the past couple of days talking about it and we're such visual people we have to like lay it out move it around and do do that um yeah so jerry has the four by four. Yeah, we decided to go with some wooden legs. Wooden legs because we have all the tabletops that we yeah. have in here were the tabletops for the two greenhouses that were here. Well, only one had tables in it. The only other one was, had tables. The yeah. other one was grown on the floor. They were on center blocks at that time, really low to the ground. Right, so there was only one center block that was standing, standing up, up. Mm -hmm. and then the tables were on top of it. And it was at that awkward stage of like, bending over and reaching out yep. but we want to make this really retail friendly hence why we took how long are these oh well, i bought uh four by fours that were six feet long so mm -hmm. that way we weren't wasting any board because right. we're kind of staying at the 36 inches right so we want to maximize of course our resources so bought the six by sixes simply cutting them in half and those are our legs but it's a really nice height to be able to shop and to pick up things and it allows us to have lots of flexibility as far as how we maximize our space underneath and around. A lot of y'all have asked about um, more so like in the production areas why we don't have tables up there and we could like grow things underneath tables. That's really great in theory, but in reality, it's a horrible mess because imagine i don't know if you can imagine vision that all these tables are going to have a solid coverage of plants so there's not light that goes through the bottom there'll be a little bit of light that goes through the side but then you have a watering issue so there's not enough light either the plants don't get enough water or they get saturated from the plants above it's just a disaster we've tried it once or twice with plants here and there it it never works so gonna have those we'll have little end caps on the ends of the tables where we can have another layer um, kind of down low I was just talking had daddy and mama down here a little while ago my daddy is a woodworker like he's a professional woodworker and has made a lot of things for us but he is going to do some round display tables for each of the three columns that run down the center of the greenhouse that way, again, it gives us a different look and it'll be a two-tiered system for plants going down the middle. So we'll have round tables, we'll have square tables, rectangle tables, all sorts of things there. Mm -hmm. Anything you wanna add about the tables? No, it's just a lot of work to get all these cut out. We are just, I just did one. I don't know if they can see that. And, we'll know, show it to you in a minute. Yeah, you know, we just kind of see how it was height-wise, make sure what we guessed on was right. Yeah. So. We did good. No, I think I, I like it a lot. Yeah. We talked about that. And then the other thing, this is a fun thing to, um, to show off. So you can probably see on this side, <laughs> we have, um, and I just set this up because they came this week and I was super excited about it. 
Um, a new line of products that we are going to be offering here at Creekside, it is from Heartwood Birdhouses. They are in Star, Mississippi. They are a family owned company that make these beautiful birdhouses is their main focus. And I love their little tagline that says architecture for the birds. <laughs> these are not just your average run of the mill birdhouses. They are really fun and unique. With a lot of things that I find that are neat and unique like this, it's because of my mama. She had found them, turned me on to them. In fact, it was, it was my birthday present from her that she gave me one of their bird houses. And then, of course, came to realize that we could carry them here at the nursery. So this is not even half of the order. I was going through the, the inventory list and we still have a bunch more coming, but I wanted to show them to you. If you are, um, before I like, get too excited about and show them up close to you these that are here are for our local people only we will not be shipping anything as far as like this kind of stuff but the good news is you can order directly from Heartwood I will have that link in the video description so just go there and you can click on that so if you're in Washington State and you want one of these just order directly from them and they'll ship it to you so there you go <laughs> Um, the one that's the biggest and the most impressive right now, um, I will, I'll put the name up on the screen because I can't remember them all right now. Um, but look at this beauty. So everything is handmade. Let me kind of show you everything. Handmade um, on the video, on the video, excuse me, on the website, it will tell you what the size of the hole is because depending on the size of the hole will be depending what bird goes in there. Um, some of them will tell you exactly what bird can go in here. And then in the back, they have a little um, a plate where you can loosen the screw just a little bit and flip it and then you can clean it out. So these are gorgeous, but they're also functional. Like they're meant to go outside and to be used. They all do have little hooks, little hangers on them. So if you wanted to put them on the side of your garden shed or a tree or a post, you can do that. And they, um, or if you wanted to have it set up on a post, you could get um, a plate, like a metal plate. So those are fun. And then really fun and whimsical. You've got fun, funky shapes to them really cool they have a lot of them will have those metal accents on them really neat really fun textures so we are excited to have these available for our customers they have um you might be looking at this and going jenny that is the funkiest birdhouse i have ever seen it's a bat house so of course bats are wonderful to have because they eat thousands of mosquitoes every night so this is a bat house it has um let's see if you can see that it has like a little rubber mat little so that when they go they can crawl and they can go up inside there because bats enjoy nice tight little spaces so again you could hang this on a tree you could hang this on I wouldn't say your house because then they might decide to go into your house and you don't want bats in your house. But we also have um, little butterfly houses coming. They look like bird houses, but they have the slits for butterflies to go in. Lots of fun. And then this is a cute one. They have a lot of bright colors. This is like um, a trio. I, I can't remember what it's called. Trellis trio, I believe it is. But they come together, right? You can take them off. You can take them off, but the little trellis comes with it, and then you can just hang the trellis on the side of whatever it is that you want to, and then you have this really bright pop of color, super cute, functional birdhouses that you can have, right? I love it. So if you were close or going to be visiting the nursery, um, we will have these and then the rest of the inventory as it comes in. We'll have that available. That will all be available when we open at whatever point we open. Yeah. Jerry did want me to tell you too, Unique Stone. If you want to order Unique Stone, make sure you get those requests into me, email me. It's in the video description because we're closing for this April delivery. That order will be closed 
at the end of February, but then we have another order scheduled, I believe, for June, June or July. So if you miss this deadline, don't worry about it. We'll put you on the next one and we'll get it for you. Um, let's show you those tables real quick. That way you can get an idea of what we're doing. Move the camera around just a little bit so you can get a different perspective, but this will be the height of the tables. Um, Jerry is going to put another set of legs in the middle to do support because when this thing is loaded down with plants and they're wet, quite heavy, quite heavy. So we'll put more support in here, but like Jerry told you, this was just kind of a, um, a basic um, idea so we knew exactly like how level it was. So you can see, I think, the rest of the tables that are, that are still on the ground. So of course, that, this will be like one big row of tables and these table widths will be able to handle two trays. So I can be shopping on this side and you can be shopping on the other side um, with plenty of flow because we wanna make it easy for customers to move around. Um, the other two that we had here were definitely more production. They were not retail friendly. And so we definitely want it to be a nice, enjoyable experience for our customers to come here and shop and make it easy and pleasurable. So. That is the idea there. And then on the ends, because they are so nice and tall, we'll be able to have um, another level down below with maybe say like one gallon plants or you know something a little bit taller, but still gives that different dimension here. Now, I think, Jerry, is there anything else you want to add? No, I was just thinking in case somebody was worried about the four by fours they're sticking up by themselves we're going to run two by fours from one four by four to the next gotcha so that yeah. way they don't flip out yes yeah so we'll do it that way lots of support will go in here that is the thing we <laughs> it's not our first rodeo so we learn from experience that um, as much support is a great thing so we will do that now we're gonna go up to the production area and yeah, let's go up there and check out the plants and show them what's going on yeah and kind of teach them a little bit about watering yes we had lots of questions about watering and how do we water and how do you water so we're going to go up to the production greenhouse too check on the annuals and we're going to talk about water and fertilizer and all sorts of production greenhouse questions that y'all had so we're going to freeze our little tushies off because it is cold outside but we'll see you in a minute in a nice warm greenhouse all right my friends so now here we are in production greenhouse two and this is the greenhouse that we grow a huge number of our annuals in yeah, here I, this is all annual right yeah. but it's not our only annuals in here N no no that's what i meant yeah. like annuals will only be in here but our whole entire inventory won't be in this greenhouse correct correct so um it was just last week that we potted these up this was the first round of plants that we got from proven winners you can check out the video that i have up above mm -hmm. and linked to see that whole process but we have gotten a lot of new subscribers and viewers since last production season. And so there's a lot of um, great questions that have come up about the production side of growing plants because production growing, I would say, has a lot of unique challenges that the home grower doesn't yeah, have to deal with. Yeah, they're two different things. So what we're doing and what you see us doing right now in the winter when we're showing you the, the potting up process is, is probably not going to be anything that you do in the garden. I mean, especially the way we maintain the plants as far as water, fertilization, it's, it's all different, it's customized. It's when we think we need to do it. I mean, it's, it's I don't know how it's to whole, really describe it. Well, it's it, a but, whole different beast, but we do these production videos because we want you to understand what goes into bringing you gorgeous plants come springtime because it is a completely different beast of growing these plants in a greenhouse when it is frigid cold outside and you're the only source of water and food for these plants as yeah. opposed to when they're outside at your house it's a completely different growing environment right right yeah so yeah so like anyway. right now it's pretty warm in here you know yeah, it's, and it needs to it needs to vent and it's crazy to say that, but it does. It needs to cool off. It needs to cool off because we tend to, we've talked about this before, is that it does, we're not growing tropicals. We're mm. not like the plant company and growing house plants. So 
we keep our temperatures much cooler than than they do or a tropical greenhouse would yeah normally i would have probably kept it at when we just potted them up and plugged them out um, probably at 60 65 degrees just to kind of get the roots established um, that, and that was what we were doing and then it was one day this week the thermostat over here malfunctioned thursday and, yeah and then it just kept it on uh -huh. and the heat it was it was trying to it was 94 degrees in here so the plants oh. jumped so you know yeah it was it wasn't a disaster what, because we yeah. caught it in time oh yeah but no but that's the point is um some of them got dried out went under a little stress mm -hmm. they're gonna they're fine they're not dead they're they're very much alive but they did get a little bit of a stress um so yeah we keep it pretty cool in here now one of the huge questions that we get a lot is you know why are we growing on the floor and why do we not have tables we that's just really a preference for us there are some growers like you've seen in our videos where the floor acts as the watering and fertilization system right so really, I think every single doesn't. one. So the plant company, yeah. that's how they do it. Yeah. Four star, Pleasant View. Yeah, they grow. All of them. They, uh huh. Yeah, I mean any kind of major big. Right, Spring Meadows with the yeah. with the shrubs. Yeah. Every you know Walters is they're mostly field grown. So there you go. Yeah. Um, but they're all grown on the floor because that's how they water and fertilize. I'll throw up a little clip and you can see exactly how that happens. Um, but also, it gives us a lot of flexibility, not having tables in it here. It does, you know. It, it it allows me to decide if somewhere in this row that you see behind me, if it, we wanted just to put some gallons in there, and it just works mm -hmm. instead of putting them on a table. Right. Um, it's just an and it's an extra expense that I really don't need to to do. Now, if I do put them on tables just like with anything else you're raising them up from the cool of the floor up here so they're going to catch more warm i really don't want to do that i would rather it be a little cooler down there and that way the plant grows slower and tighter right slow and tight so yeah. there's that so i think we've covered hopefully that then water so after the video last week where we were potting these up i had question you know people asking you know well do you water them yes so i will tell you just from a video production mode um, we don't always show you watering because watering is such an absolute individual moment by moment case by case scenario how we water in here is going to be completely different than how i'm watering outside in january that's going to be completely different than how i water in may which is different than july which is different than august um, but yes Jerry came back through that video we hadn't even left, and he was using the hand water wand with the hose to give them a nice drink of water. Yeah. Now, somebody asked if we um, water them in well. We don't water them in well. I, I as don't far as like, them, we don't saturate. I don't saturate them, and especially like super bells. I wouldn't. I would. It's just more of like a little, barely any kind of water, just enough right. to get them through and why the night. Is that? Because their 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 roots are prone to rot. Yes. Especially in cooler growing temperatures. Right. And so remember, so. they're they're still the liners, and so their their root system is like this big inside of a pot that has a lot of right. soil. Now, again, watering them now is completely different than when it's end of april may oh yeah, yeah. oh man we get soaked probably a couple times a day a <laughs> couple times a day yeah right so he just goes through and just waters them he yeah. doesn't need to water them now because they're they're perfectly fine um but yeah so this is the biden's this is the goldilocks rocks we've got new growth we've got buds oh, yeah, on them um yeah they're doing great and then fertilize because remember we have <laughs> the fertigation system so we can fertilize through the hose and you use a liquid fertilizer do you yeah. know what the ratio is on that it's different every time so it's, it's really kind of it's pointless pointless okay. to talk about um but we gonna, try to maintain this it's, it's when we really want them to start going it's we 200 parts to 250 parts per million there you go 
And then we do, at this point, we are hand watering. We did have like sprinklers in here, but because of the concrete floor installation, those had to come out. They were on the floor yeah. and they were pipes that came up and did, they, they whirly gigs is the best I can describe it. And it provided like a rain-like environment and it watered the whole entire greenhouse on the bottom. All the hanging baskets have these white drippers, so that goes directly into the hanging basket. But we are going to put the irrigation system back in here, but they're not going to be on the floor. They'll be from the ceiling coming down. Yep. yep. Yeah, I talked to my guys on that one to see what, what we're going to do. Yes. And so. I know you're going to ask, we use um, Berry Hill Irrigation out of Pennsylvania? Virginia. Virginia. So Berry Hill is great for us. Been, we've been customers for them for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, one more question that somebody had from our visit at the plant company was if everything is run on the floor, especially in these big, huge greenhouses, like these big nurseries, oh, yeah. why, is, why are they so tall? Like why is the roof so tall when everything's on the floor? You had a great point. Yeah, m most of that is their automation equipment they have to have the headroom to be able to run the big booms and mm -hmm. which in here we, we we're not doing that no so they have booms that literally go and we saw this at one of the greenhouses we have have it on clip where these booms come in and pick the plants up and move it so it's all automation then they have booms that come back and forth with the fertilizer water um, so if you have all that equipment you need space because you have a person standing there you just wouldn't have the room so that's yeah, why they're that, so huge where, yeah where they have to put the the beams or whatever it is right. to be able to support it there's probably some other reasons as to why i would think also like ventilation ventilation i mean each one's different yeah. yeah and it's different from spring meadow growing shrubs to plant company growing house plants to four star pleasant view yeah. growing animals yeah. right so it all depends on what you're growing um so anyway i hope that's answered some questions i know this is not like our you know normal q a but because we are in production mode we've had a lot of some some of the same <laughs> questions come up so i thought well let's just go ahead and address them to give you an update on on the little babies they haven't jumped a, a ton there's not like a huge difference that i can show you right now just know that they are growing well and that we have a massive order coming this week coming up on it should be no, here wednesday this coming wednesday mm -hmm. this week 8200 plants 8200 plants 8200 plants coming your way here at creekside nursery so we'll show you that uh, at least give you a little update and also if you're not following us on like instagram um, or facebook i would encourage you to click that link in the video description because especially we do a lot of like the behind the scenes mm -hmm. um, pictures and stories and content that you don't get here on youtube so make sure that you head over to instagram or facebook it is all the links are in the video description there so make sure you you check us out there because we have whole different content in that area as well with different tips this week we just got finished doing hydrangea week highlighting all sorts of different hydrangeas that you could add to your garden so i'm going to do that from now until really um throughout the growing season. So each week we'll have a different focus, like we'll have pollinator attractors, drought tolerant, deer tolerant, um, just all sorts of fun things to do. So head over there and check us out. But anything you want to add? No. Nope. You're good? I'm good. You're good. It's lunchtime. You're going to go feed the man? Yep. As always, thanks so much for going with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.